You know this brother? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وصحبه وبارك وسلم My respected شيوخ My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته once again, it is by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we are gathered here today in this final event for Islamic History Month. Uh, as you know, we have been doing the Islamic History Month for a number of years now, and these events are important because they showcase to Muslims and to others our history, the contributions of Muslims, in the many fields of science and technology and civilization in general. And this year, alhamdulillah, we have been focusing on a number of countries with the idea of food because Islamic History Month Canada has established the theme of multicultural cuisines of the Muslim world. We thought that we would pair that with some of the countries that are experiencing hardships and difficulties and challenges, and that we would use this as an opportunity to raise some funds for these, uh, for these countries and for the work of many of the organizations in these countries. As usual, we will begin the program today with the recitation of the Quran, and I would ask our Imam, uh, Brother Saif, to do a recitation for us. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وإذ ابتلى إبراهيم ربه بكلمات فأتمهن قال إني جاعلك للناس إماما قال ومن ذريتي قال لا ينال عهد الظالمين وإذ جعلنا البيت مثابة للناس وأمنا واتخذوا من مقام إبراهيم مصلى وعهدنا إلى إبراهيم وإسماعيل أن طهر بيتي أن طهر بيتي للطائفين والعاكفين والركع السجود وإذ قال إبراهيم رب اجعل هذا بلدا آمنا وارزق أهله من الثمرات من آمن منهم بالله قال ومن كفر فأمتعه قليلا ثم أضطره إلى عذاب النار وبئس المصير وإذ يرفع إبراهيم القواعد من البيت وإسماعيل ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم 
ربنا واجعلنا مسلمين لك ومن ذريتنا أمة مسلمة لك وأرنا مناسكنا وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم ربنا وابعث فيهم رسولا منهم يتلو عليهم يتلو عليهم آياتنا ويعلمهم الكتاب والحكمة ويزكيهم إنك أنت العزيز الحكيم صدق الله العظيم Jazakum uh, khair. Thank you very much, uh, Brother Saif. Uh, these verses of the Quran, there is a special verse in, the, in this section of the Quran uh, that always strikes me. And that is part of the verses that you recited. That when Ibrahim alayhi salam was raising the foundations of the Kaaba with his son uh, Ismail, the dua that he made is very instructive. And that is our Lord accepted from us. And you know, whatever we do, whether it is individually or collectively as an organization, uh, this really underlines the feeling that we should have we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept it from us. Because ultimately, the deeds that we do, the obligations that we fulfill, it is Allah's acceptance of these obligations that really matter and not anything else. So jazakumullah khair. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all of our good deeds and may he forgive us for those deeds that are not pleasing to him. Brothers and sisters, today, our, our theme is honoring Somalia. And many of you over the past many years have seen and have heard the challenges, the difficulties, the hardships that our Somali brothers and sisters have endured in Somalia. We know that in Canada here, Alhamdulillah, our Somali brothers and sisters have been working really hard to establish institutions, schools, and other organizations for their community, and generally uh, for civic engagement. With respect to Somalia, there is no one else than our speaker tonight, Dr. Adam Issa, who is eminently qualified to tell us about Somalia. Those of you who have been in Toronto for a long time, would have known him because he was very much engaged in the community before he went to Halifax. And I have a very long bio for him, but I won't read all of it, uh, just some sections of it. Uh, our, our Sheikh has been nine years as the Commissioner's Advisory Committee, a member of the Ad uh, Commissioner's Advisory Committee for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, the RCMP. He was the founder and member of the Coalition of Muslim Organizations and the president of the Somali Relief Network of North America. He was also involved in the Canadian Muslim Heritage Association and the Darul Hijra Islamic Center. Sheikh Adam Isa received his bachelor's degree in civil engineering at Somali National University and his master's degree at American International University in Virginia USA and for the Arabic language and Islamic studies. And he has completed his PhD in Islamic politics and jurisprudence at the same university. He has been extensively involved in community work for over 20 years as an advisor, facilitator, teacher, activist, mediator, and community leader. Not only is he engaged in the Muslim community, but he has been a regular presenter 
at various synagogues and churches in the community, and he has been recognized by the Jewish community and the Christian communities as a peace builder and as a community organization, organizer. He received the Queen's Golden Jubilee Medal, and he was among the top 25 immigrants in the Maritimes in 2017. That's just a few uh, of the accolades that I can mention here, but we are pleased to have Dr. Adam Isa with us, and I invite him to present about Somalia. Bismillah, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. ثم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وبعد إخوتي وأخواتي dear brothers sisters elders مشايخ management the board the chairman the brothers the sisters the youngsters the حفاظ القرآن Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. It is my honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has given me to be with you tonight in this blessed center. Islamic, masha'Allah, Institute of Toronto. Greatest center that I have seen in Toronto and also led by most honorable brothers and leaders of our community. Jazakumullah wa khairan. We are very, very much uh, thanking you for the opportunity that you have given us and given me particularly per, as a person. Regarding the issue of Somalia, I'd like to mention a few points, although you have a PowerPoint over there. But before even I start, I will just divide it into segments. And Somalia, before the, let us say, over 100 years, and Somalia after independence since 1960, and, uh, and maybe Somalia of today. That's one. Also, I will be put the light on Somali Relief Network, the organization that's been uh, established here in Canada from 1992 and became a charitable organization from 1993. So the history that we have from Somalia, uh, the earliest, some books go back and mention the name of Somalia more than 3,500 years ago. When you go back also, the early Egyptian is Hatshepsut leader. She sent that time number of vessels and ships to go the land of Punt, uh, which is the right now called Somalia, to get uh, this special stuff. And uh, the thing is that we are not available the rest of that part of the world at the time. After that, the history we have was when the Islam came to Somalia. Okay. Sorry. Oh, Jazakallah. Okay, yes. Now, then after that, Islam came to Somalia. There are a number of books being written and a number of stories. The earliest is the one saying Islam came to Somalia before it went to al Madinah al munawwar That means the first batch of the Muslims who went to Ard al-Habasha at that time, Abyssinia. The Abyssinia at that time, it was all that area, uh, starting from where, it, or, or maybe including Eritrea, what we call now Ethiopia and Somalia together. And some people even went farther, and they said 
the port of Zayla, which is a Somalia now. That was the where the, the Sahaba came through. Although we have also other uh, reports that saying, no, the first the Sahaba, they didn't come through that one. They came through in Eritrea and port. So whatever it is, just what I want to like to mention is Islam came to Somalia the earliest. So that's, I mean, just to make it a uh, very uh, a nutshell, so that's the beginning. Then there were, of course, several batches of people came to Somalia to spread Islam. One of the features that we can mention is Islam came to Somalia in a very safe way and peaceful way through business, through people who immigrated over there. That's, a, that's the way it started. The other point that I also like to mention is from that time, Somalia, as well as the people who used to live over there, they actually took Islam very seriously and they committed to practice the Islam, particularly uh, what they call coastal areas. Very strongly they take it. And so that's what, 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 what happened from the beginning. Now, the second point that I would add, the history of that previous time is, is the one that made me really very happy, which was that the, one of the greatest leaders of Somalia at the time, a great alim, a great mujahid, that who defend the grave of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Hijaz, the year of 1549, 1542, and from the Portuguese, that uh, trying to take over and even take over the grave of Rasulullah. And that great leader actually defeated the Portuguese arm, including the leader Christopher de Gama. So that's also that part I leave you there. And I conclude with that. 1909, the history telling us the Muslims in Somalia, the ulama, they made a fatwa to give zakat the people of Hijaz at the time. The people of Hijaz, you, now it's generally it's Saudi Arabia, but at that time we're talking Mecca and Medina and Jeddah and that area. So that shows and Somalia was very rich at the time and Hijaz was going through difficult. And where we are today, then all of us, we are actually uh, well aware of. Now, let me come to Somalia. And I would like also to share to issue of Somalia. Somalia we are talking is 1884, where the European is colonized generally in Africa. They divided the community of Somalia into five segments. So the Somalia we're talking of today is to only two segments who became independent 1960, July 1st, get together. That's what we're talking. The other three segments or the three groups, one of them was under the French. That's what later on got, it is independent 1977 with condition that they should not join to Somalia, despite they wanted to join to Somalia. The other two, is the, they are, one is under Kenya, the other one is under uh, Ethiopia. And that's because of the British, when they were leaving from Somalia, they didn't want Somalia to get together, all of them. And you can ask yourself and make your own math. Why Somalia particularly? Only one country we know the history in entire Africa. That's been divided into five groups or nations or different people. That's, that's one question that i like you to deal with, it, all of you. Now let me come to Somalia and of today. And with the land area of Somalia is
and it's 627,657 square kilometers. And you know the Somalia I'm talking. The one I'm talking right now is clear to you. It's not whole Somalia. Otherwise, that seven, the, 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 what you see that normally, the map would have been changing into a different way. So that's, that's the, in terms of the area. Somalia also and has, I mean, highlands and Bismillah, mashallah, they have a few rivers. And also, it is coastal line. It has the longest coastal line in Africa, 3,333 kilometers long. Also, and Somalia, and it has a border with a number of countries. And north, it is a Gulf of Aden and Red Sea. And the east, it is by Indian Ocean. And the southwest, it's by Kenya. And the west, and the also northwest, by Ethiopia and Djibouti. At approximately 246,200 square miles, or the other number that I mentioned, already, it is the size of Texas of today. The population of Somalia is not, is not agreed upon because there is no exact number that you, we can rely on all of us. However, there are a number of esti estimate, estimations. One of them, the, the maximum saying 21 million. The, you have another one, 17 you have the lowest that I've seen is 12 million. So that's the number. Uh, but we don't have exactly, actually, an accurate number that we can say that's what it is. There, there is also forecast uh, by the year of 2050, Somalia will reach 35 million people. And the Islamic religion, when we come to, as I mentioned earlier, and that we, we made it already clear how important it is, and they took Islam very early. And it is a strategic place in the world, which is the East Africa, or Horn of Africa. If you come to the Muslims, Somalia, previously, as we knew, it was 100% Muslims. Things has changed these days. We do not know how much other non-Muslims became or, 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 or Somalis became non-Muslims. We do not know. But definitely things has changed these days because of immigration going here and there. But previously, at least seven, more than 70 years when, uh, of... I don't know, Shana. Okay, which one I have to say? Okay, thank you. Thanks. So that Somali was 100% actually Muslims. But today I cannot answer it because we didn't get a, 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 a number or estimation came out after that. Uh, the good thing was Somalia is a what called homogeneous country. Why? Same language and same religion and same even color and, 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 and same culture, you see them. And what they known is also, not only the same religion, they are all of them Sunni, 100%. And on top of that, they were all of them Shafi'i Madhab. So this is, again, it's a unique position that I do not know any other country that has all of these together. And in terms of the learning of the Quran, that was number one education for them. Always. So they had the, 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 the information I received and was 70% of them learn reading the Quran and writing and the, 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 for Somalis before any other kind of education. And also, and what I uh, could add at that point is, and I, I mentioned the, the defending of the, uh, the burial place of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam 
the, the uh, Wafla battle in Ethiopia led by Ahmed Ibrahim, or we call in Somalia Ahmed Guri, on August 28, 1542, Christopher da Gama, the leader of the army of Portuguese that was killed at that time by the leader of, the, of Somalis. And I have something else over here still. Okay. The, okay. Uh, the other point that I'd like to mention is the BBC, and, and when we're talking about the media, the first time at a branch of Somali language being actually and given officially in, in London, BBC, was July 18, 1957, the first day that BBC London uh, aired Somali news in Somali language. Somali ranks, uh, that's another information. I got it through the uh, online, uh, saying it's the sixth, sixth happiest country in Africa. It is one of the uh, fertilities in the world with six children per woman on average. That's a great blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is true. And I think anyone who been part of Somalia or have seen there, you see that. Not only back home in Somalia, here we have. By the way, I have eight children, so I am among those. So you, you see, this is the way it is. And I, I, I'm not a unique. You, you go to a Somali community, you see that way. Actually, I can tell you, when I go back to Somalia, because I have that number of children, I cannot look at the face of the people because each and every one like me has more than 20. So I'm the lowest, so I have to look down. So that's, that's one point. That I want. So, I mean, do not wonder to see it is one of the, uh, the, the, the producers of the Inshallah, for you, your Muslims, at the current time, too. Okay. And at the, in terms of the health issue and the infections, Somalia has one of the Africa's lowest HIV infection rates, 0.4%. Somalia has, this is another issue, Somalia's DNA politics, it is, it is so high. And when I'm talking about that, I'm talking about the progress they made after they actually departed from Somalia, immigrated to the uh, outside world, as well as those who've been under either Ethiopia or under Kenya. And uh, that's what you see, a number of them. As an example, the first hijabi Muslim woman uh, in, in America, okay. and it's a, it's a Somali woman. Uh, this is called uh, Portland in Maine. Uh, she came last year. Also, U.S. Congress is uh, uh, the first hijabi woman in U.S. Congress, Ilhan Omar, you know all of you that. Uh, the current finance minister in Ethiopia, in Ethiopia government, is a Somali background person. Uh, the defense minister of the newly elected government of Kenya is a Somali. Adam Barre just a few weeks back, actually. And the former president of International Court of Justice in The Hague is Somali also. And that the, the spelling is not right, is Abdul Qawi Yusuf. Deqa Nala, who fled from uh, fled Mogadishu 31 years ago, became the first Somali and American mayor. And in the United States of South Portland, and which is 90% white, has a smaller Somali community than other cities. And in the UK, Council uh, Rahia Ismail has been chosen as Island Tony's mayor for 2019 to 20 at Island Tony's annual council meeting, Thursday, 16th May. And, and they said that was the first uh, 
a Somali person got that position. And, and more, he were here, as you know, in Canada, we have also uh, one of our ministers, it's a Somali origin. And also we have another two, um, what they call an MPP, one over here in, uh, in Toronto, and another one where I come from Halifax, actually, being elected last year. So they are actually very active in that area. Now, one of the other points that I like to mention is Somalia are very well known and actually recorded and registered the one of the top Hufad al-Quran in the world. Very well known. To the point that you see all the, I mean, Western countries, people who actually participate the competition of the Quran yearly in, 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 uh, in Emirates, majority are Somalis who became number one. One of them, the first half of the Quran from America, USA, it's a Somali, from Sweden, it's a Somali. And representing those countries, but originally from Somalia. So they are very well known. And here you know, majority of the Masajid Hufad al Quran are Somalis. But it's not only that. We have some addresses is that we have thousands of thousands purely ladies who are Hufad al Quran. So they are good in that situation. What they have very big challenge is the other side of the life, uh, particularly uh, the politics in Somalia since 1991, since the federal, uh, uh, what they call uh, central government has collapsed uh, up to now, over 30 years, Somalia did not stand up at its own feet. It has so difficult. Beside that, so much actually famine, drought, wars, difficulties, uh, diseases that actually has striken in Somalia. And that I will also share with you that one. And another. This one uh, is actually uh, it's, uh, the organization called Somali Relief Network of North America that I mentioned from the beginning. It's been registered here in Canada 1992 and was a charitable organization since that time. That charitable organization is actually helped a lot of people back home as well as local over here. And uh, this is the, the, the mission statement that shows uh, our mission is to continue to serve the most vulnerable members of society, women, children, elderly, both locally and abroad. Our work is done without distinction of race, ethnicity, nationality, sex, class, language, religion, or politics, or anything. So that's one issue. These segment is over there, climate change over there, that has the what made uh, Somalia face challenges. These challenges are there. Extreme water con uh, and, and, uh, weather condition, loss of water, and severe malnutrition, and spread of uh, cholera. Uh, you see, so these are the uh, challenges Somalia going through. 4.6 million of Somalia's population face emergency level of insecurity and 38 percent projection is for, for the summer period of 2022 that we are in that number of population in Somalia will live with food in food food insecurity and also you see 670,000 internally displaced people IB, IDB 120,000 children go to bed starving. More than one third of households have one person going without food in over 24 hours. 700,000 livestock have died. That was that time, but now it's actually multiplied that number. 
And here it is the drought is the timing that happened uh, 2016, 2021, 2011, 2017, and 2020. That's the map of Somalia. That the Somalia we're talking, it is the two and parties who got together, 1960. And uh, SRNS, Emergency Response Plan. That uh, uh, and letter is stands up for Somali Relief Network of North America. So the food support, water supply, emergency response services. You see over there, and uh, in Ramadan, last 10 years, Somali Relief Network was providing every night 1,000 people in Somalia for breakfast and dinner and, 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 and night meal, which is a suhoor, iftar and asha and suhoor together. Every night 1,000, more than 1,000. That means over 30,000 people that we took care of almost more than 10 years right now was going on. Udhiya or Qurbani been given the, one of the last years over there, 300 lambs, 17 cows, 10 camels, and, and you see the people being fed is over 5,000. And Sakatul Fitr, that the Muslims paid over here and the Somali Relief collected, that was um, actually fed more than 400 families and 100 orphans. This is the kind of food that we distribute. The children that you see is, is a special boarding school of orphans. Uh, from years, eight years to two alif, they have two programs. One is Hufd al-Quran and Islamic study. The other one is academy, 100%. So these children, they will grow up that well. They have a double major in actual education. Islamically, Hufad, and, and ulama and education side also be also and um, very well and um, educated at least until high, high school and then they go to universities after that. So these are the, the students. This kind of food is that being distributed and sometimes the food um, as a package and sometimes food as a cooked food that you see. Here you see another um, example, is, which is that the, the picture you see it is a one uh, desert place that Somali Relief has established uh, a well that animal and the people, both of them, get their water. And, number, and here you have also um, the, the masjid that the people, you, uh, they, are, they got actually to pray over there. That place people used to pray the surface of the, of the earth that the daytime so heated, they did not have anything to shed themselves. And the night is too cold. You see that left side, the water truck is that we distributed. Only the last three weeks, we distributed more than two million liters of clean water to over 20,000 people. So you see, that is the masjid over there. The people are praying over there, first the time. So that Somali Relief actually established that program. And here you see the donation help. That is uh, the information. Yeah, you can see it is it's just to make it short. And not only that, our plan at this time is to get from 500 to 1,000 water trucks that could actually benefit more than 50,000 people and their livestocks. Inshallah, if we get enough uh, donation, that's our plan, bi'idhnillah. And there are many other things, but I think these are the m main points that I like to mention and in Somalia. What I like to end up over here is, we are here as a Muslims from every part of the world. And we are one, actually, community, all of us. Whether you come from India, or from Pakistan, or from Bangladesh, or from Saudi Arabia, from Egypt, from whatever it is, from China, from South America, from America, from Canada, from Turkey, we are one community. So we have to act as one community. And every time we have to help our people back, back home, anywhere, the flood is in Pakistan. 
the difficulties in Palestine, the difficulties in, 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 in Yemen, the difficulties in China, the difficulties everywhere. So we are not just saying one particular place. All of them is our blood, is our people, is our actually our own body, a part of our body. So each and every day when we are raising funds for one of them, doesn't mean that has to be forgotten. But we put a strategy. Tonight is for Somalia. Tomorrow could be Palestine. Day after tomorrow could be another one. We should do like that way. And we must be very generous for all of them because all of them are ours. And not only are ours, the main funder is it is you, brothers and sisters. May Allah bless you and take care of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakumullah khair, uh, Dr. Adam. Uh, alhamdulillah, he has provided us with uh, some important information. And I'd like to open the floor for any questions. I know that there might be questions, so if any one of you has a question, you can just raise your hand and ask the question. Um, I'm sure that there should be questions. If you have, yes, Brother Hussein. the question yes and uh, uh, brother Hussein asked an important question which is uh, since we mentioned about the water he said are there current uh, projects regarding digging waters wasn't it out the, your question uh, the answer is yes we, we have done a number of them so far and we are doing more uh, let me elaborate even more for that issue, and you see even the information over there, what we have done. The surge we made from India to China, to Turkey, to different places, was the, the most needed water areas are the, actually uh, the east and north side of the country, where it is actually almost, I can say, is extremely dry and get little war rain at the same time. So it's a desert area. That area, the problem of that area, water are deep and down more than 400 meters. It is, imagine that, beyond your imagination. Now, we estimated the companies went over there to dig one well. It cost between 250 to 300,000 US dollars. We realized that, that that's not really a realistic to do that because we cannot raise that much money and nobody can do it. What is the alternative? The alternative is better to buy a rig and that rig can actually dig as many wells as possible with much cheaper than the, 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 if you give companies that am big amount is that I already mentioned. And of course, in order to buy a rig with its uh, with its accessories and, 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 and tracks and all of those things and compressors, that also it's over a million dollars, US dollars. Okay, when you put them together, plus shipment, plus installment, plus all of those things, uh, plus training of the people. So we are actually raising, but, but that is cheaper, 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 100%. On top of that, one rig will be able to actually dig maybe, let us say, over 100, let us say, wells. So that will be, maybe instead of 300,000, it costs you lesser than 20,000. So that's one the project that we have. And actually, we're putting it that money as, until we reach that level. That's one side. The second point is, people are now dying out of thirst and their animals. What should we do? So we provide water trucks. The water, we give them wherever they are, with their animals and themselves and their children, and they benefited that one. That is actually, it is, it is a kind of emergency relief that we are doing right now. And I mentioned already last three weeks, we did more than two million uh, liters of water, uh, clean water. That per truck, it cost is actually three, only $300 Canadian dollars. So that's also another level. 
There is a shallow water, what we call. It is the mostly south side of Somalia, where actually either the sea or the, the, the two rivers, Shabele and, and Jubal rivers, are close. So the water is closer. Some, some places 50 meters even, some of it 100, some of it 150, some of them lesser even. So that actually will cause very well uh, between, I would say, 10 to 20,000 US dollars. So that's also another project. We do that too. So here, when we're talking about the water, these are three ways that we do it. The bigger project that we have, and that we call, inshallah, everlasting charity, and stay there. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to buy one rig and dig so many wells, let us say next 100 years, the reward comes to us after we die, and even our children die, and children of children die. Still, we are receiving the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through that water. So that's how important it is. And as Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, when he was asked, what is the best charity? He said, to give water the people, water to drink, which is true. We have created every living from water. We are water, and, and we live with water. That's exactly life. So Jazakallah khair for that question. It is the really, I would say, the heart of the issue. But also, I mentioned the other also programs that we knew, the, the Qurbani, the Ramadan program, the also uh, the, the, the needy people always that we, we, we feed them. So we have those. But the water, 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 that's the name of the game. Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Yes. I, I didn't get it. Ah. The, the food? Uh, Italian food? Ah. Okay, that's another good question, mashallah, jazakallah khair, particularly for our sisters. Uh, I think my wife has the, is a, I call her Shaif, and she's here with you tonight. But let me tell you a little bit about it, which is, um, you know, Somalia being um, colonized by British, by Italia, by French, and uh, so, you know, the people learn from here and there, and that affected them. Uh, some, some uh, the actually impact was positive, like the food. So uh, the, we have a pasta, uh, particularly, I mean, f different kinds of it, very beautiful, very, mashallah, uh, delicious. We have, that we have. We have a number of actually uh, dishes that Somalia got it from, from, from Italian uh, colony. And, uh, and, and alhamdulillah, most of it, it is over there and written the names and what, what is uh, known to Somalia. Uh, you have Anchero, you have Urbusa, you have Bismillah, mashallah, you have Sor, you have, in our main language, I'm saying the names. So you can see there, you have a Sukar, you have a, the fresh meat. Uh, if you go even Somalia, right now, the Somali restaurant is, they have one, uh, I, I, I said, uh, pointed that, that they can unique from the rest. Big, I mean dishes. If they give you the food, the Somali, if you go to a restaurant and they give you food, it actually makes you, mashallah, full, and you may give to another person extra that you have it. So that may, it shows that Somalis are good eaters for the food. So that's, that's why they give more. But more details are there over that kind of, uh, of food. But particularly, pasta is very well known from Italian issue. These young girls were also ha have some experience. Would you add anything about that? What do we got from Italia? Food? You could come up, you know. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes. Uh, the, the good question, uh, that's the, well, I would say that at the end of the day, that's what we need all of us to ask, 
uh, the young man, mashallah, and always, I love the youngsters always, they're very practical. Sir, you know what? This is a jargon, what are you talking about? Tell me the name of the issue, which is, is there a way I can donate tonight? What the, that's the, the, the you kill me. You made me alive, you didn't kill me. So yes, the answer is yes. And we have, alhamdulillah, box over there, boxes over there, and we have also machines, any form of it, any credit card, debit, everything, alhamdulillah. And if not, you go, inshallah, also online, and you can do it over there. So it is very easy, as Allah made it easy for us. There is no, any condition that we say, I cannot do it. You can do it one single dollar, you can do it up to a million. If you cannot do anything money, you can do what? You can volunteer, you can make dua, you can take that, and the, the statement and the, and the information, you get it tonight to your friends, to your school uh, classmates, to uh, the family. So one way or another, we can actually benefit. Okay, Jazakallah khair. What's your name, by the way? Harun. As you, you, get a, you get a good name. Harun was the most beloved person by uh, uh, the Jews at this time. More than Musa, they used to love Harun. Why? Because he was a very cool man where Musa was stubborn and was so strong. So they, they always they said, okay, we'll get along, along with, with Harun. So Zakallah khair. He was as, as smart as Harun. Zakallah khair. Yes, please. Another young man? Okay. Yes. You mean in our Muslim community over here? Yes. Uh, the question is, our brother asked, and he said, what kind of um, actually help and assistance that, that's been given to you from either Somali community or the other Muslim community over here? I would say, Bismillah, MashaAllah, very well. To be honest with you, Muslim community are very generous and very, MashaAllah, I'm helpers. And they did. I can tell you, Wallahi, sometimes I got cry the way they love to help. Uh, despite, I mean, all of these kind of difficulties that surrounded us in all over the world, and you donate tonight over here, and tomorrow over there, and yesterday over the other side, and you will do that continuously, they will never get tired. And uh, all the, what we have done, it, it is the donation that we got from the communities over here. And so it's not only Somalis, it's everybody. Bismillah, mashallah. So that always continues, and I'll tell you two examples. One of them was uh, a small masjid in, uh, in uh, Oakfield, uh, just two, a couple of months back. Uh, it was a Jum'ah, and they have a number of Jum'atis, because the masjid is small, four or five Jum'ats actually. Normally I criticize so many Jum'atis in one masjid, but when it comes for donation, I appreciate it. You see, so, so we, we did all of this, and the small masjid, they got it more than, I think, about $15,000. The Wallahi, the, the, the Imam and the management, the, the chair told me, they said, since that masjid been built, Ramadan or outside Ramadan, we never raised that amount. We never raised it. Why? Because people, when they hear the, the facts and the truth, Everybody must respond in a very emotional way, an Islamic way. And alhamdulillah, we do that. Yes. The young boy, mashallah, come here. Start up and tell me your name. And you look like Somali too, your features. Are you? Yes, what's your name? Yes? Elias, mashallah. Yes, Elias. What is your question? Okay, good, good question. Since uh, I agree with you, he said since uh, Somalia colonized by Italia, are they just influenced on the, on the only food or there are other things? Um, first of all, it's not Italia alone who colonized the Somalia, as I said before. It's a big part of Somalia. 
And, but I agree with you, yes, the influence in many, many Somalis actually speak fluently in, in Italian language. And also, as, as a, your own information, and I would like you to know, the universities in Somalia, National University, was the, the previous one, the biggest one, was actually official language was Italian language. Uh, the one uh, I went to myself, uh, the, the, uh, the, the technical one was uh, the generic that I got it was not Italian, but others they had it. So the education it was based on Italian language. And also, many also cultures of Italians were there, their language, their uh, habits, whatever it is. Also, there were some negatives. So, Zakallah Khair for your question. <laughs> okay, sure. Yes, yes. Yes. That's a good question. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, maybe uh, uh, Chairman Farhad would add anything regarding but the question of the brother is uh, it's a suggestion actually that he said what we have heard tonight touches our heart is so I would like you to have this suggestion which is why don't you go to Council of Imams, all of them together, and ask them and uh, each and every masjid uh, make particular contribution for the issue of Somalia. Easily you can get hundreds of thousands. Uh, it's a very great suggestion. And by the way, I'm one of the Council of Imams and one of the actually considered the, the, the actually founders, Abdul Hayy Patel and myself and individuals. The majority came later on. We started that very long time ago. So, alhamdulillah, and they are, mashallah, and would do, inshallah, but we might invite you too, so on my behalf, you may say that word better than I do. Jazakallah khair. Jazakumullah uh, khair, Dr. Adam Isa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. I think it was a very spirited uh, discussion, and we have learned a lot, and it's time for action. Inshallah, we will do more than that. We have at the Islamic Institute of Toronto done a lot. Uh, through the zakat collections and through other collections on an annual basis alhamdulillah we have been distributing uh, over 150 sometimes 200 thousand dollars to many relief organizations and dr adam has uh, suggested that and i've suggested to him uh, that uh, to connect with the board and i will ask our board uh, at the islamic institute of toronto to make a special contribution for somalia we have we have done this in the past alhamdulillah but because you're here today and you have honored us with your presence, inshallah, we will make a special contribution to Somalia. But definitely, brothers and sisters, do not leave tonight without making a donation to the uh, Somali Islamic Relief Network. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. This um, wraps up our Islamic History Month program. Many of you have been here with us for the past four weeks. And inshallah, I would really like to thank you and, and say, Jazakallah khair for being here. We have a number of programs coming up. Um, one of them on November the 11th to the 12th. It's a weekend with Dr. Jasir Auda. As you know, Dr. Jasir Auda is a major scholar in North America. Uh, he sits on the European Council for Fatwa and Research, and he is the president for the Maqasid Institute. He has written over 25 books on Maqasid. So he will be here on November 11th to give the khutbah the Friday evening, he will do a public lecture here, free admission, and on Saturday, he will do an intensive tafsir program on Surah Ali Imran. 
Uh, this is on our website. Registration is required for the Saturday program. So may Allah reward you again. We have some Somali snacks available, inshallah, at the back. And please connect with each other and share the brotherhood. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.